Scotland, a land that has captured the imagination of people for centuries. A land of druids, potions and elixirs. I've always uh, wondered what makes uh, Scotland so captivating. It's not just its uh, breathtaking landscapes or their charming countryside. It's that their long-standing heritage holds the promise of great things. When in Scotland, you feel like an explorer on a trail to discover the true spirit of life and a want to capture each moment to file away in the catalogue of memories. So I am on a journey to explore Scotland through its culture, its legends, its history and of course, its greatest gift to the world, Scotch Whiskey. And along the way, sample some of its most mouth-watering delicacies. This is my discovery of Scotland through its love for food. A true testament to any country is the mix of its spices. In every nook and corner of Scotland, you get an insight into how the Scots choose to live. And it truly reflects their deep sense of value for substance, knowledge and passion. Well, no country has been truly travelled unless you've tasted the local cuisine. So here I am at a highly recommended restaurant which is on every food lover's guide, the ubiquitous chip. The decor here has a visible commitment to being close to nature. Uh, the shrubs hanging from the ceilings, uh, climbing up the banisters. The, the whole atmosphere here is very warm and welcoming. And I think it's a, it's a constant reminder that food brings people together. Ubiquitous Chip is steeped in Scotland's food culture. This place has been dishing out traditional Scottish cuisine using only fresh and locally sourced ingredients since 1971. It has a list of dishes that quite frankly look delicious and they really wreak havoc on my decision-making skills. Oh, well, fortunately, I have the person to help me make the right choice. Or should I say right choices? Colin. How you doing? How are you? Very well. Colin is the chef who's carrying on his father's legacy of running Ubiquitous Chip. It's a restaurant that truly embodies the farm-to-table concept. But so let's start off with this place. I mean, how many years back did this place start? 1971. Oh wow, so that's, that's almost 50 years now. It's nearly 50 years old. My father worked in the whiskey industry um, and decided he wanted to open a restaurant. He had no experience of restaurants, no experience of cooking. As my father was building the restaurant, he was also educating himself about food. When the first Turkish kebab shop opened in Glasgow, my father took us out to the kebab shop and went into the shop and bought different things and came back to the car and handed them. We all tried them. At the same time we'd be eating in Michelin star restaurants, we also went to the first McDonald's. Wow. So, his mind was always hugely open about food. And luckily, we've got the best produce in the world. I mean, we're in the middle of the city here, and the best produce in the world is produced 20 miles away. Oh, so the produce comes right from... Yeah, it's from all, all, ar all around Glasgow. And he thought, what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to base my restaurant on Scottish cuisine. It doesn't have to be French, it doesn't have to be Italian. We can actually embrace what is Scottish. Is there like a plan, let's, let's make this global, let's reach out to people? The chip has any night of the year, 20 different nationalities dining in the restaurant. So we get folk from everywhere and we have staff from everywhere. So, I mean, Scotland for, for me is about inclusion. Well, this is just such a wonderful place and I can't uh, wait to try the haggis. I've, been, I've heard so much about it. Have you had it before? No, I haven't. Oh. I've saved it for, for, you know, coming here and trying it for the first time. <laughs> 
and to appreciate Scotland's national dish, I have the well-known Scottish food blogger Rachel Cohen joining me. As someone who's an expert on Scottish cuisine, Rachel is the perfect companion for my first ever haggis experience. So well, thank you, thank you so much for recommending this place. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. No, I'm glad you like it. So how did this whole uh, Robert Burns Haggis Day sort of start? He's a national poet and a lot of his work is very evocative of the Scottish land and people and on Burns Night, traditionally people have haggis mm. and neeps, which is uh, turnips and tatties, potatoes, and a dram of whiskey. And somebody will, will do the address to the haggis, which is a long poem. Well, in the words of the famous poet, Robert Burns. If you wish her grateful prayer. Give her a haggis. The haggis was absolutely delicious. But for the Indian in me, a meal just doesn't end without a dessert. So Rachel's offered to take me to one of Glasgow's best ice cream parlours. Of course, with a Scottish twist. Or should I say a Scotch twist? So uh, now we get to eat our whiskey instead yes. of drinking it. <laughs> Absolutely, it's amazing how the Scots find a way of putting scotch into everything. Well, we're renowned for being ingenious. Yes, it's, it's fantastic. <laughs> Is there anything else that uh, has been taken from outside somewhere and you know given a Scottish spin to? Well, for example, at Halloween, you know, everyone's uh, puts up pumpkin lanterns right. uh, for Halloween, but in Scotland we uh, carve a turnip instead. So you carve a hollow out a turnip, put a light inside and a scary face. But why is that? Uh, why, why the turnip and not the pumpkin? Well, pumpkins, I mean, you can grow them here. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, Rachel, thank you so much. Uh, it was wonderful seeing you again. Oh, my pleasure. After meeting uh, Colin and Rachel, what struck me was the one thing that elevates the standard of this food and whiskey is the freshness of the ingredients used to make them. Now I'm curious to find out what makes them so special. So that's where I'm headed next. The place to be is the Abalor village and its namesake distillery. Known for the locally grown barley that sets their whiskey apart, they built an outstanding reputation just based on letting the deed show for itself. And today, to take me around, I'll meet a farmer who's been working with the distillery for years. Ian Green is a barley farmer. His family's been farming in the area for over 60 years, and they've built an estate that stretches out across 3,500 acres. You know, Abla village is all about giving back, right? Yes. Do you feel like, in a sense, that you're giving back to the land? Yes, I mean, as, as farmers, we're custodians of the country, really. So I'd like to think that we're passing it on in probably better heart and condition than I received it in. So what are your memories about being here with your dad? I think a big learning car for me was the, the, the statement where always work with the soil when it wants to work with you. Always work with the soil when it wants to work with you. Yeah. And you've been doing the same thing with your kids? Yes, my, my, all my girls have been brought up on the farm as well. And they're the oldest ones now in the business too. So it's basically getting handed on to the next generation. And is the, is the oldest one that's in the business teaching you a th few things about the business? She would like to think she does. <laughs> We're going to the warehouse where they store the barley. Yes. That's like a mountain in there. There's about 20 tons of barley. There's 20 tons, yeah? Yeah, so that would make about 10,000 bottles of abalawa. 10,000? So people here, we're looking at 10,000 bottles of abalawa. I wish we were. <laughs> <laughs> After the tour of his farm, Ian offered to make some soup, which is specially prepared during the freezing Scottish winters. So this broth is uh, the secret to staying warm in this weather, is it? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Uh, you tend to find in the winter time, all the farming community would have their porridge, oats in the morning. Right. And then a healthy bowl of soup broth at lunchtime, and then a main meal in the evening. What all goes into this, Ian? There's, there's all local produce. Right. Everything's local, so it's local vegetables, local carrots, local onions, local barley, and local meat. Oh, lovely. And it's left to simmer for a long time. 
So is this like some sort of secret recipe that's been passed on generation after generation? Yes, it's my mother's, my mother's local recipe. Uh, she, she's been making it for years and I've had it ever since I was a child. Oh wow, I'd love to learn this. I'm gonna go back and make it for my wife. Earn some brownie points. Yes. <laughs> This is really good. So Ian, what makes the Bali here so special? We're very fortunate with the climate and the soil we have in Scotland. And the quality is good because of the long daylight. So we've got the soil, we've got the water, and we've got the sunlight. So this place was, uh, you know, meant to grow Bali? Yes. Yeah. So. Well, thank you so much Ian. Thank you so much for having me in your house, cooking this wonderful meal for me, and also taking me through the history of the place. It's a pleasure. It's uh, lovely to meet somebody who's as generous as Ian is. Uh, not only was the food warm, so was the conversation. And uh, as a second generation farmer, it's, it's incredible to see the, the love, the passion that he has for his land come through in everything that he does. So on my way to the distillery, Ian recommended that I take a walk through town and see how this sense of community is reflected in every brick, stone, and structure. The quaint Abelor village, perched on the banks of the Spey River, has a historic association with the Abelor distillery. Among the most uh, compelling stories I've heard is about a tradition where a bottle of 12-year-old is poured into the river every year in February to mark the beginning of the salmon fishing season. This is supposed to help bring good luck to the locals and is a sign of the everlasting bond shared between the distillery and the people that live around it. The man behind all this is uh, James Fleming, a man who not only designed the distillery, but also gave back to the town that raised him in more ways than one. On my way, I've seen a hospital, a town hall, this bridge, all of them have been built by him. And so it's no wonder that the people in the distillery live by the words, let the deed show so highly. Well, the founder actually lived by them. The Abelo Distillery, established in 1879 by James Fleming, is known for the sweet aroma of sherry that envelops you as soon as you enter. It's located on the foot of the Ben Rinnes Mountain and uses soft spring water for making its distinct single malt. The Abelo distillery can actually be heard before it's seen. The sound of clear flowing water is my warm welcome. And although I was expecting a towering structure, this sandstone building actually has a really warm, homely aura to it. Today I have the pleasure of meeting the best person to attest to this special care, master distiller Graham Cruikshank. Graham is the embodiment of a master distiller. With a career spanning 35 years, his life has been dedicated to the art of making whiskey. And he's got an array of artisanal spirits to show for it. Uh, what makes this artisanal malt so unique? Well, Canal, here at Avalaua, we pride ourselves in uh, what we call double cask maturation. We, we use the American oak for that sweet vanilla, creamy toffee notes, whereas the European uh, oak, uh, we tend to get darker flavours, uh, more spices, dried fruits, um, and the combination of the two all go to combine uh, and give us the type of whisky we expect. How does the whole process work? We mature the whisky in here for almost 12 years, up to 18. And, and that only at the end of that maturation process do we combine the two types right, together. So which is what makes this so unique. Yeah. Right? Double cast maturation. The double cast maturation people. To really understand the process, I had to try each spirit, of course. The American oak, right away, you see that rich, it's lighter, sweeter. rich golden color. Really fresh vanilla, creamy toffee. Yeah, well, I feel like I'm in an ice cream parlor oh. <laughs> uh, and I'm, I've got a big dollop of vanilla in my glass now. So you can see right away. Right, there's a difference. Um, there's a yeah. difference in color. 
Oh, you've got the two of them here. Yeah, so you have one golden amber and one much more darker. Would it be wrong to say that, you know, I can smell like Christmas cake in there? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a combination right. of yeah. that dried fruits and spices that you get in a Christmas cake. This is really like Christmas cake in a glass. Yeah. So. Graham then pointed out that understanding the process by which it's created is imperative to learning the craft of whiskey. And it all boils down to one ingredient, barley. Locally sourced from farmers that work within a 15-20 mile radius, it is this that gives the Arbalor whiskey its distinctive taste. Speaking of taste, Graham had said one of the best ways to enjoy whiskey is to pair it with equally amazing food. So, we headed to the area where a feast was laid out with the flavours that would complement the Arbalor Single Malt Pest. So this looks great, Graham. Can you uh, take us through what the first course is? Well, Kunal, uh, tonight we've got um, an artichoke and roasted pepper tart with hummus. So what's the whiskey we're going to have with this? We're going to go for the 12-year-old. Okay. Yeah, and the 12-year-old characteristics are typically that, that sherry influence that we are known for, um, with that sweet, sort of fragrant red apple flavours and hints of cinnamon. So I think that's going to work well with the roasted peppers. Um, the sweetness of the red apple is going to complement that artichoke and really set the, the, the flavours off in both the tart and the whiskey. Let's try. So let the deed show. Let the deed show. When you sort of let it sit in your mouth, uh, there's different flavours that, that emerge. It allows it uh, to, to develop on the palate. Um, and, and, compare, and alongside the food, it just releases so much more. We have now uh, a pumpkin uh, stuffed with uh, barley. And this is going to go well, really well with our 16 year old. Paired with the pumpkin, it's going to give us that sort of, that soft fruits again. We're looking at um, apricots and peaches in there um, and a little bit of spiciness as well. Right. And that sherry character coming through. So. Look, I'm, I'm not an expert on this, but uh, I can definitely feel the synergy between the food and the whiskey. I mean, uh, the earlier dish really went well with the 12, and this seems to go perfectly with the 16. You know what I'm getting from this is that the right food with the right whiskey is like a great marriage. Uh, they've got to complement each other. We're going to move on to this uh, final dish. Uh, we have this uh, cho chocolate dish with uh, some chopped nuts and uh, dried fruits and also some raspberries. So the 16 year old, that soft fruits, the uh, apricots, I'm um, going to marry it up with the, the chopped nuts and uh, the soft fruits in here. The chocolate is going to marry up with the, the darker notes that we get from the European sherry oak cast. So, so this, the 16 goes well with, uh, with like the barley and goes well with the dark chocolate yeah. as well. Mmm, this is really good. Oh yeah. wow, that goes really well together. Yeah. The whiskey with that higher alcohol content is going to sort of break down some of that fatties in the, in the chocolate. So it's, it's giving you that chance to release that flavours in the mouth again. Where people, I can tell you from experience now that good food, great company and a great malt, it just doesn't get better than that. Well, I realised today that while everyone's always associated food pairings with wine, doing them with whiskey is really an unparalleled experience. The perfect combination of flavours makes you appreciate each ingredient to its absolute fullest. I've had a fantastic time sampling some mouth-watering local delicacies and learning how the people here are still so connected with their land. Above all, uh, the Scots believe in the importance of celebrating what their land grows. So whether it's the freshest ingredients used in cooking or distilling, they choose the best of what nature has to offer. And so it's no wonder that their whiskey stands a league apart. They just let the deed speak for itself.